Hey everybody, it's Leslie Rohde with, uh, now it's live. Hey everybody, it's Leslie Rohde with Marcus Brain Trust. A little bit of alignment problem there in the clocks. So, hey, uh, it's fantastic. We actually got a hangout to work. Oh my heavens, who knew, right? Fourth time, fourth is a charm. Uh, bear in mind, these, these worked for like several months and then on March 11th they stopped working. Uh, thank you, Donna Fox, for surfacing the issue. Um, and then uh, we kept wailing away at it one time and another. And I, I, we all deeply apologize for the time a uh, whole bunches of you, like 100 plus, wasted uh, trying to get on Hangout with us. And um, was not our intention. Deep, you know, deeply sorry. You wasted your time. We wasted some of ours as well, but hey, now it's fixed. So we have Corey Burke from the Marcus Brain Trust, and we have Dan Thies, a uh, founding partner in the Marcus Brain Trust. And today we're going to try now, I think this is the fourth time, we try to deliver exactly the same presentation. Is that right, Dan? Well, no, I've changed it several times because, you know, I had, you know, obviously I didn't want to deliver the, deliver the same presentation to nobody four times in a row. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. yeah. You always do better if you. Yeah. Of course, to nobody, we should deliver a different one every time. Yes. Exactly right. And so uh, Dan's got a uh, prepared presentation about the upcoming changes regarding Google and mobile that are going to happen on the twenty-first. And uh, <laughs> we thought we were like way ahead of this uh, three weeks ago, uh, but now it's like impending doom. And so for the, all those of you still logging in. Um, and there's like now, yes, a whole bunch of you. Um, so that's the subject of today. Now, uh, Dan, do we want to lead off with any news stories? You know, I have not had a chance to look at that. Is to, uh, um, there's one that I think is worth mentioning for any AdWords advertisers out there. There was a little bit of a bug with uh, Google's quality score um, display in AdWords, and so we had, uh, you know, some people we. <coughs> Generally speaking, um, if we see a quality score drop, we'll try to address it, but we don't you know, go pause campaigns because it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be any change in the performance of the campaigns. But a lot of folks had uh, actually paused, uh, paused campaigns. That bug, that glitch has been fixed, but if you don't unpause your campaigns, your scores won't update and, and refresh. And so um, if you said, holy cow, our quality score has dropped uh, within the last few weeks, and uh, go ahead and unpause those campaigns and they should be uh, showing the right scores within a couple of hours. So there's that. Um, the other bug uh, of Google's that's recently been fixed is the one that we're talking about here. So, um, so let's get to it, I guess. Yeah, right. I mean, so go for it. I mean, we've got several, uh, um, let's say, you know what, what, what we, we make sure that we've caught up on, uh, let's see, once you made your site more friendly, go more friendly. All right, so yeah, on the site. So there are a couple of questions we'll get to. Um, Terry says you, uh, no problem. You guys are great. Thanks, Terry. Yes, we're great, but it's not it's not no problem. But anyway, it's a problem um, when you waste <laughs> a bunch of people's time, and we blame Google, but you know we're the ones that invited you. So yeah. Uh, Paul Wright says, thanks for the apology, but that's life. <laughs> and your other uh, efforts easily make up for it. You guys are awesome. Thanks again, uh, Paul. That was fantastic. Um, uh, have you just started, or are you an hour into it? No, 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 Bobby. So it's, it's, it's 3 p.m. Eastern time, and as Dan likes to say, it's that whole round world problem. And we get this wrong, too, particularly with our Australian private clients, as we were calling it weird times of the day. So no, we've just started. So here we go. And I'm just saying, so, if we can put people on the moon, why can't we flatten the planet out so that we have one time zone? Hmm. I thought it was it's, flat. It's not flat? And it's not pave flat. all the, you know, furry bits over so that we can drive faster. Anyway, okay. Oh, <clears> damn. Moving on. You're, uh, and, and Corey, your question, I haven't flown around it, so I don't know. So all right. So uh, Dan, you're up. Why don't you go ahead and, uh, let's see, wait a minute. We have to, like, make you presenter. Present to everyone. Okay, okay you're gonna make me presenter, and then I got to do the screen share thing here. I had to screen share. Yep. Desktop two, start right. screen share, and then I go over here on the other desktop. Now you can't see me. I'm looking over at the other screen though. 
Yeah, go ahead and do that. And play from start. There we go. Now, go for it. You yeah. should see my presentation. So um, this is, uh, you know, obviously a little bit of a red alert. Um, I mean, and it's going to affect <clears throat> anybody that owns or operates a website. Every every marketer, every <clears throat> SEO consultant, every business owner. Um, this is something that's going to have a reach like Panda and Penguin never did in terms of the the, the number of websites that are going to get hit by this and and won't be expecting it. Now, obviously, if you're here, you already are a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, but I wanted to make sure we had kind of a platform to let you know how you can make sure you're ready. And uh, and also to uh, you know if if there's uh, any last minute stuff you need to do to get uh, to get prepared and, and to deal with it um, that uh, that you've got a little bit of time to work on that. So you know what I hate computers. What, what is the I hate computers? Yeah, I, I, uh, I do too. And it's why so, can't we make money without computers? That's what I. Okay, about. great. So that that isn't there, right? And then it's going to be there. Watch. Let's try it again. Yeah, that was the like the click here to add add text, right? Okay, there. Now it's working. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, wow. so you know, it's kind of interesting. And so Google announced around uh, within about a week of each other this April twenty first mobile friendly update, and uh, we'll talk about that more in just a second. They also uh, announced uh, about a week later this thing called the doorway page update. What's interesting is that one of them they gave us a date for. One of them, they actually wanted webmasters to be able to do something about, and the other one, if you're going to be affected by it, they'd really rather, sorry, just step on you, uh, because that's really about um, spammers, and I don't want to name any names, but uh, you know, the people that are out there building massive numbers of automatically generated doorway pages may or may not have a problem when that rolls out. We'll see how good Google is at actually catching people. I'm not confident, because they should have been able to do it by now. With the mobile friendly update, it's 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 um, it's gonna be the biggest update in terms of the impact on traffic to websites that that Google's ever done. It's gonna be bigger than Florida. It's gonna be bigger than Panda. It's gonna be bigger than Penguin. If you aren't ready for it, it's going to hurt. You might not think mobile's that big of a deal, but um, one, I would. Uh, question if you don't think mobile is a big deal whether you've actually looked at your analytics very closely and whether you've actually looked recently and of course there are lots of problems with measuring what actually happens on mobile so for example um, it might it might not seem that that uh, mobile matters because uh, most of your transactions that are completed for a retailer can be completed on a desktop but that doesn't really tell you how many times different people looked at that thing on a mobile device uh, before you, you you bought it and where and where we do have cases you know cases the limited number of cases we have where somebody has actually implemented a better mobile experience on their site we see a bump in conversion that bump in conversion doesn't necessarily show up entirely on mobile either and that's because people are using multiple screens and multiple devices now but um, even if your website looks great on a phone that doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for this update uh, because well Google's advice that they were giving and, and kind of your common sense that well gosh it's responsive it looks great uh, it could actually fail so what we want to do is, is make sure everybody understands how to know if you're ready or not and, and Dan, so, isn't it true yeah. I, mean, I don't know where I saw the statistic it's something like 60% of all Google search is now from mobile is that true is that uh, what you heard too um, I don't know what percentage of Google is mobile but it's it's big uh, it, it's a big chunk of their ad revenue um, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a big chunk of search I mean I do more searches on mobile devices than I do on the desktop because it's just so convenient to be able to just search for something you know a lot of those are navigational queries and stuff like that and you know weird non-commercial stuff like I you know I somebody on television mentions uh, you know some Inca uh, ruin and I want to see more about it so I grab my phone and, and start ignoring the television um, you know that's perfectly normal and sane and not something that the crazy person would do at all and so yeah there's a, there's a lot of search on mobile the thing is you know you you can't just check your phone. Obviously, if it doesn't look good on a phone, you've got a problem no matter what Google says, okay? But this isn't the how it looks on a phone algorithm. It's the Googlebot. And Googlebot's uh, rendering engine, um, which means that they're... You knew the day was coming, Leslie, right? That that we're we're using the the Mozilla bot for for this now. So they're they're uh, doing JavaScript, they're doing CSS, they're doing the DOM, they're doing all that uh, fancy technical stuff to figure out where stuff is, in particular to figure out how stuff is going to respond to different screen sizes now. So, um, so a lot of the stuff that that 
will actually make it work and look okay on a phone also isn't best practices. So, for example, redirecting people to an M dot is something uh, that you'd idea. really rather not be doing anymore. Um, you'd rather that it was all served up under the same thing and all that. So, but uh, from what I've seen, and obviously we, you know, we've got you know uh, dozens of clients and hundreds more people that we work with in different you know capacities, friends, um, uh, you know you name it, right? And so I've looked at a lot of sites, and the worst offenders so far in terms of what Google identifies are, um, are fixed fixed type sizes or little tiny types. So, you know, for, we'll, we'll show you an example of one in a second here. Um, and the, the uh, not adjusting to the viewport. So, you know, if, if I'm looking at it on an iPad or if it bright, it, it's the same site no matter how big the screen is, and that's just not mobile device friendly. And, uh, you know, it, it ain't... It ain't 2007 when everybody was laughing at that stupid mistake Apple made with that iPhone thing and nobody would ever buy a $600 phone. Um, now it's the future and, and these things can be a problem. But the biggest one, the biggest gotcha that's, that's been getting people is robots tech. So they've got everything done right <laughs> except they've got a problem in robots text or they've got a problem uh, and they may not even know that stuff is in there if they're using things like WordPress. So um, Webmaster Tools gives you a warning, and they finally just fixed this uh, this link a couple of days ago. So thank God this slide isn't uh, quite as relevant. Um, but what they used, to, what they were doing was when they, when you got a warning and you checked the link. So if you've checked over the last few weeks, you go to PageSpeed Insights, and PageSpeed Insights will look at it and go, "Woohoo, everything is okay." But that doesn't mean that everything's okay. So actually. Um, our pal Alan um, wrote up a, a detailed blog post. I was sitting on Facebook and we were um, joking with one of the people from Google and, and I, unbelievably Alan actually got um, got him to, to, um, to engage and, uh, and, and put some attention to it and so we knew it was coming that they would fix this redirect. But where, where Webmaster Tools should have been taking you and we believe now if you actually go through Webmaster Tools today will take you to uh, the mobile friendly test on Google developers. In fact, uh, I don't know, it's kind of funny because it actually shows up with the URL looking like it's on Webmaster Tools. So clearly they've redirected something in some bizarre way and so they've got weird stuff going on. But this is the correct mobile-friendly test because this is the one that will actually observe whether you have resources that are being blocked in robots text that matter. And so the, the, the typical example is if you use JavaScript jQuery libraries to help you resize and do all that kind of stuff. That's perfectly cool. That makes you mobile-friendly. But if the Google bot can't actually fetch those because the directory that they're in is blocked, which a lot of WordPress uh, installations have those in WP includes and also have WP includes blocked in robots text that 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 keeps you from going. So here we can see that our you know our our friends at Moz have uh, well they'll either have some work to do before April 21st or they won't. I have a pretty good feeling that they'll still fail this test after April 21st because it's pretty darn obvious that they just don't give a damn about mobile because they've had these problems forever. I mean their site is basically I mean, you can tell that it's there, and you can squint real hard and kind of see that there's a website there, but you really can't use it on a mobile device. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you if you hit them on your phone, I think you'd agree that that they it's a really really terrible experience on mobile. And again, I, I think that they just don't care. I think that they don't see that that, that that mobile is all that important to them. They may be wrong about that. I don't have access to their analytics, so I can't make the case to them. But um, but certainly in terms of the eye test and what the mobile friendly test says. Um, they agree that Moz is not mobile friendly, and the biggest thing that 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 that, is, that they have here is fixed type size too small and viewport. So they've basically done all of the wrong stuff. And one of the things that that, that Google will show you here is um, is how the Google bot sees the page. So if there are resources that are blocked by a robot's text, you can actually check. There's a link to see what they are, um, and then if you if you don't pass the mobile friendly test, you can actually um, you know follow through and get some help on how to get it mobile friendly and mm. it's very good it's very thorough they're not going to do the work for you but they'll tell you what work needs to be done to fix it um, so do use this tool but also do check your phone so Leslie mm. um, I'm actually not quite sure if we've gotten any more work done on this but um, here at Marbray um, we're not exactly proud of our mobile experience but we're not going to have any additional problems on April 21st and uh, we also have some resources that are blocked by robots text, but there aren't any resources that are actually critical to it being uh, mobile friendly. It's just stuff that no Google, you can't have it. 
And so, you know, here we have an example of a site that's not terrible. It really is not terribly good on mobile. And Google says so. And here we have a site that's really, um, you know, for somebody that's sitting here talking about mobile, that's a little bit embarrassing. And obviously, it, you know, I would. Whatever. Actually, the, the newest the newest post looks better, by the way. But, yeah, I, well, uh, I mean, I know that we were actually, you know, doing some work on this because I know that some work was done to actually make it past the mobile friendly test at some point, yeah. um, some time ago. But, um, but you know, so don't just. But the point here is, don't just think if you pass the the the, the mobile friendly test, and you can use our shortener there. It's seobt.co slash mobile friendly to get to the test. Um, also, do actually look at the phone and actually do think about what the experience is like. That might not be relevant to April 21st, but it's going to matter. And I want to tell you people now, because sometimes I tell you people what the future is going to look like, and you don't listen to me. <laughs> okay? That's and I don't want to... You know, know and, and so every year I'm up on a stage with giving a presentation saying, I freaking told you so. And so here I am freaking telling you right now that 11 bajillion percent of everything is happening on mobile devices right now. That's a lot, okay? So that's point one. Absolute fact. Mobile is big. It is not a fad. It is not going away. And the fact is, right now you're not doing a bunch of transactions on people's mobile phones. It's true for most retailers. Even if you're mobile friendly, it might not be the greatest thing. You know, Michelle's got a couple folks she's working with with Facebook ads where actually most of the retail transactions that we're able to get out of Facebook are on mobile devices, but that's a market where you know in a product and in you know markets and products where we where we, we felt like that was likely to be the case but here's the thing Apple um, announced their Apple pay thing um, last fall it's not on every phone they ship yet um, but every phone that well every new phone that they ship has has the Apple pay capability and the way it works is you set up your cards and your accounts and stuff like that and Apple pay once and then when you want to pay for something you can wave your phone over it and stick your thumb on it but you can also do this with online transactions. So you can um, log in with Apple Pay, and you can literally sign for something using your phone. Um, my bank oh. has been pushing yeah, me that's... to get Apple Pay, right? Um, oh, yeah, they're all they're all partners. You know, Chase is. Yeah, yeah because I, they, Apple they, solved one of the big problems with these mobile wallet they, things, which is they went direct um, to the, the people that, that that control the transactions to 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 cut out a lot of those middleman expenses from the thing and so as you know if you're a retailer you're actually gonna not be sad about what it costs to use Apple pay on your website the thing is two three years down the road I, I bet you half the online transactions are completed with somebody sticking a thumb on a phone well, I mean, if you even look right, and now, even right? if it ain't half, it's going to be a heck of a lot, and it's going to be a heck of a lot this this the, this year in the holiday season. I guarantee it. Well, um, you know, just think about that. I mean, you, you, the the corollary I think is <clears throat> for those of you who travel, you know, how many of you actually print the boarding pass, or how many of you actually get it sent to your phone, and then you know stick the phone on top of the the scanner at at, at the checkpoint in the uh, in the airport, right? We're going to get the same same kind of thing. It's kind of like the the the, the cards used with RFID wave across the scanner. It's the same kind of thing with with phones is coming, and I don't I mean, you know three years yeah maybe maybe sooner maybe later, but there's no doubt keying in a 16 digit credit card number plus expiry, you know plus and the the thing off the back of the code. card and hell I'm driving man I mean yeah there's no way <laughs> can, I mean can't you make it safer for me to buy stuff while I'm driving right but but with with a with a uh, with a payment system that is mobile friendly changes everything and right now there's there's no way that this is not the wave of the future everybody wants to buy on mobile it's just too damn hard well and you know it, it, well for PayPal users it's very easy it's a password yes. you're done um, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, Gina, my wife, you know, buys stuff uh, with her phone all the time. But it's either Amazon or a retailer she uses that she already knows as they use PayPal, and that's why she uses them because they use PayPal, and she doesn't have to punch in a card. And it, it, the, the more times a Target or a you know, gosh, how many of them have, have there been this year? I mean, these morons don't learn, right? The more times you know these retailers get hacked and and millions of card numbers get out, um, the the more people are going to say, you know what? I would rather not ever, ever, ever let the waiter or the cashier or the anybody, you know, have my card data ever. I'd rather that it was 
that, that somebody had to steal my phone and my thumb to be able to, uh, to, to do credit card fraud on me. And that's what it's going to get to. You're going to get to a place where there's not a plastic card in the first place, where it's just, right, you can, you can get a card that doesn't have a card, and it's just immediately linked to your Apple Pay, and you're done. Um, yeah. uh, we're not there yet, but, um, but the, the, you know, the, the yeah. fact is the insecurity of the credit card has been badly exposed, and it's going to go away. So it's only a matter of time, and um, and and you know when when it fully manifests itself, you're going to see transactions are going to happen on mobile. But look, I mean, even if you don't believe that that's going to happen, um, if you're building funnels, if you're using you know universal traffic engine uh, like we teach, or or you know doing you know Facebook advertising, AdWords, whatever, you, know, you might have mobile off. But the fact is, the easiest funnel to build, the easiest. You know, conversion problem to fix is is actually building a mobile funnel. If you do lead generation, and you're not on mobile, it's because you're just you, you you just haven't bothered to build out mobile funnels. But retailers too can 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 do well with mobile funnels. I mean, Michelle's been having great success with people um, with Facebook advertising, and uh, you know they were all people that said, well, you know, we don't really want to do mobile. And, you know, okay, well, when you actually build a funnel that gets gets uh, gets to where people can right design the experience so that that it's in Tended to happen entirely on the phone, it, it works really well. Amazon's experience on the phone isn't um, as good as their desktop experience, but um, it's very good. They're kind of leaning a little bit on the advantage of having the uh, you know one-click checkout. Uh, again, oh, it's yeah. like PayPal. On uh, you know, it's if you have the app, it's 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 just a click, and if you don't have the app, even on the website, it's just a password, just like with PayPal. So um, so the thing the thing with it with this update that you got to understand is. Um, you, you, you're either your site is either going to be mobile friendly or it's not, um, and um, the they say that the ranking difference is going to be on a page by page basis, but that doesn't mean that just because that page is mobile friendly, if the rest of the site isn't, um, if if you, you know if you don't have a problem on this one, you're going to have a problem on the next one because what they really want is for people to not have a jarring experience going to you know from a search result to a website on a mobile device. That means no redirects. That means no busted redirects that take you to something that's not even the same thing you were looking at. Um, and um, and well, it means that the whole experience, the site is actually usable. That it's not just some mobile stub. Uh, you know, like when you were building. Um, a website that was supposed to look good on a Ford line by 16 characters screen, uh, you know, 15 years ago. So. Um, well, yeah, it, and almost, almost, almost all the all the changes we're talking about are going to be overall. They're going to be site wide. Um, that's that's the that's the that's the thing. It's like, it's, you yeah, know, well, the, the page isn't mobile page. friendly if it links to pages that aren't mobile friendly. So, I mean, really, if you've got any pages on your site that aren't mobile friendly you need to start getting getting on that but again like I said most most folks have already gotten the memo on mobile you know two three years ago uh, when you know um, when it was you know pretty obvious where things were headed um, and so most of us don't have an actual problem with mobile experience um, if you do it might be time if you're a retailer and you can't get your your cart uh, mobile friendly to think about switching to something like Shopify or something like that and moving to a cart that um, that somebody else gets paid to keep mobile friendly if you're not doing millions a month in, in in revenues you know sometimes it's better not to do your own cart development and as the world gets more complicated um, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, kind of sometimes you you, you, you got to let somebody else help right mm. No, because yeah, marketing has gotten complicated, right? Well, I mean, more more so than when we started, right? So, um, exactly. There's there's so much more going on, um, and so before we get to Q and A, I just want to mention, you know, maybe we can help. Um, so, if you'd like to talk about any of this stuff and you don't already um, have some means by which you are talking to us, if you do, if you've got us on Skype, if you've got us in. Uh, Gosh, we got so many different ways that we talk to people, um, and of course, we'll do questions about mobile here and whatever else anybody wants to get into today. Um, just email support at marketersbraintrust.com. Let them know who you are. Let them know what you do. Let them know how you think we can help, and we'll get you in touch with the right people. What we typically do is, um, you know, so if if, if you're going to end up talking to me, or you're going to end up talking to Leslie or Corey or all three of us or Michelle or whoever, uh, the first thing we're going to do is have somebody 
get some data uh, from you. So things like access to analytics and things like that. So don't be insulted that you're not hearing from me personally to get your um, your AdWords account number hooked up into our client center to look at your AdWords account or, or you know getting in getting logged into your um, your business manager uh, so that we can look at your Facebook ads or you know getting into analytics and stuff like that. It's just that it, it doesn't make sense for us to, to 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 go in and look until we've got all that stuff together. So we'll have folks that'll help you do that. And by the way, those folks actually know quite a bit about marketing. And so the questions that they ask you will certainly be relevant to us giving you good answers. Um, we do offer, um, I wouldn't say that we're a full service agency because there are things that we don't do, but uh, paid search, Facebook advertising and remarketing, content marketing, SEO. Um, Leslie uh, does take on a, a limited number of private consulting clients to work on strategy and direction. Uh, we do job out for research projects sometimes, so if you're just trying to figure out what's the right way to measure or keep score between your different marketing channels so you can figure out how to allocate budget. And of course, we do uh, an increasing amount of um, uh, conversion improvement, conversion rate optimization, and testing work with people. So that's my entire sales pitch. Um, if anything comes up uh, about the Hangout, um, and you want to get some help about that specifically, you can send me an email, Dan plus hangout at marketersbraintrust.com, or you can find me on Skype at dan.thies. And that beautiful Lego Dan um, is uh, actually my Skype profile picture because I've found that this is actually the most recognizable image of me that exists, which is sad and weird. So yeah, I mean, that's my formal presentation. It's because of the hand. I think that's what does it. It's the weird hand. Um, yeah. Well, he got the teeth right anyway. Uh, yeah. The whole yeah, the whole chipmunk thing going on. Yeah, going on there. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. So the hair's you know much cooler now. But uh, well, yeah. There, there's that. Yeah. yeah then, but yeah. So yeah. All right. So let's. let's I mean, I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning here on, on our on your, that. So that was great. I mean, then there's there's a uh, right now the internet's are all a rage about about this update, um, and, and so definitely if you're not on top of this, you really ought to be. And so, and I would I would top line this is like everybody needs to be on mobile, everybody needs to be mobile responsive. It's the very first line item in all of the web design, blog updates, all those things that we do. Uh, as Dan was as what Dan was talking, I was checking some of the work that we have that our staff has done. Um, just to check that, yep, okay, that one's good, yep, okay, that one's done, oh, well, that one's not so good, right, just to make sure that we're doing what, you know, what, we, what we teach. There have been some really good questions here, so let me, let me see if I can page back through these and get them in more or less order. So, um, Leslie, you might want to make me not the presenter, because I have to... Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so hang on a second, yeah, I thought there was always that thing. I have to sneeze. Stop presenting. And um, and you know what? What I find is I always have to push the button twice. Yes, you have to why. stop me from presenting. I'm not allowed to stop me from presenting because only by the grace of your powers am I the presenter. Well, I, I, and I'm okay with that amount of power. I just I would like the system to accept my power from the first click rather than the second click. That's an attribution problem, isn't it? Interesting. Okay. All right. So. Um, uh well let's let's so there's there's interesting so Jerry uh, with the G asks I have an old site made on Dreamweaver well first of all we're sorry <laughs> that's unfortunate <laughs> yes uh, that gets excellent rankings for my important keywords I don't want to mess it up but I need to be mobile friendly okay so here let's so talk about fix that. the content don't change the URLs right. Yeah, exactly. So we we actually so there's a couple things you so can do. Keep the so, content that is, fix the site, and don't change URLs. Yeah. So you have a, you know it's it's a theme problem. With, all right. So here are the two the uh, three things that you need to think about. So one is, uh, you know, con content's a separate matter to some extent. And you want to make sure that your content, for example, if you're like a photography website and all your images are four hundred thousand by three thousand. Okay, well, you got a mobile issue anyway because there are no screens that large. I think just some of the Samsung phones are almost that big. <laughs> anyway, but the uh, you want to make sure you don't change any URLs as you do a theme redesign. So there's something I should should point out to you. So one is if you have any question about how we recommend doing a site migration, you should absolutely message support at Marketers Brain Trust 
and point out that you want to do a site migration to a platform or a theme that is more mobile friendly. And, and go ahead and ask the lo lovely ladies in support uh, you know, to, to escalate that to, to one of us so that we know, one of the three of us, so we can answer your question. And there are a couple different ways we can engage with you. We could do a, like a, you know, we could actually just take a look at your site and tell you, yeah, you're good. Uh, we could do a, a very short term, like a like a one hour, uh, just a, a consulting engagement. There's some freelance content we've done, content we've done about that. Or we can offer you even a close to, not quite done for you service. So, but yes, what you want to most importantly, you know, whenever you're doing a site migration of any kind, changing theme, changing domains, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure you don't change any URLs unless absolutely necessary. That said, if you have a penalty or a uh, you know, link cleanup problem, then there's good reasons to change URLs, but that's a whole other topic. You didn't ask that. And so absolutely, if, you, if you've got that going on, before you do it, please, please, please contact us. I mean, the only thing in terms of the ways to lose money on the Internet, um, the, the top of the list is probably spamming, and second to that is changing your URL structure. Just saying. Okay. Dan, are there any? That I miss any? I think that's it, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I would uh, argue that uh, an ad group overloaded with 800 keywords um, is an even better way to lose money, um, especially if you're not even testing ads in that group. But okay, granted, you're right. I was, I was thinking because you can do it really fast. I mean, you can crank that dial way up and really burn through the cash. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to put that into category, then answering the email from the prince in Nigeria that says all you need is your bank routing information, that's actually tops both of them, all of them, right? I think. Um, okay, whatever. Unless okay. it turns out to be the one that's legit, then... <laughs> Which we haven't discovered that one. Let me know you if you... can have some of Haile Selassie's money in your pocket tomorrow. Yeah. Um, is there an easy way to convert or a service be mobile, etc.? I don't. That doesn't. That's not syntactically correct. So I'm not sure what that means. Is there an easy way to convert or a service be mobile? Um, we'll come back to that. Um, let's see. I missed my time zones. Hey, welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yes, we would all love the, the world to be fine. Real quick, while Leslie mumbles his way through the questions, um, I, thank you, Corey, for asking. I, I'll feel that gap. I actually, one of my sites was old school, old school, straight HTML, and most of my traffic for that site actually comes from YouTube, and a lot of YouTube watching is done on mobile, and and I just changed the uh, landing page to mobile and watch my opt-in rate double. Um, and the way they get their information is through email. So if they want to get a, you know, the email's formatted for mobile. The the main landing page is formatted for mobile now and tablets and desktop. And it's a lot of video-based information. So it's going to be mobile friendly as well. Um, and the only reason why I really did it was I don't care about search. I just care is is that the traffic that's actually coming to it. There's a large percentage coming from mobile, and I was shocked just how much the opt-in rate jumped. Um, same messaging and everything. Uh, a little different layout, uh, color-wise, but for the most part, it's now friendly on desktop, mobile, and and tablet. When before it was really just a it was a 2008 HTML page that was desktop friendly, and um, so people, if you, if you give them access on the front end in, in the, the method or um, whatever they're coming to your site with, they don't necessarily have to buy from you right then and there. And uh, talking to a lot of our clients, you know, people are still kind of stuck in a one and done. They come to my site and they buy, and that's just not the case. Uh, people leave, they get busy, they're at work, they're on their phone, at, on the train or whatever. And uh, I know for me, I've saved emails and gone back on my desktop later. So it, make your funnel definitely as user-friendly as possible on the front end for as many people as possible. That makes sense. Yeah, one of the things kind of interesting, uh, you know, it, it's kind of funny because 
like a super old website. I, I, I've got one that's been online and you know, it hasn't changed since 1998. And nobody knows it's there, but, um, but I, I put that through the mobile-friendly test. And it passed with flying colors, no problem. Hmm. Why? I, there, there, there's no JavaScript on the damn thing at all. There's no such thing as a cascading style sheet when I built it. And, and um, you know, there's it, specifying which typeface and what, what size and all that stuff. No, was, there, there was P's, there was H1s, there was H2s, B's and I's. That's it, son. And uh, and so you know, the the funniest thing is is that the 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 websites that are super super old. Are actually are actually perfectly okay because all that old old HTML stuff was already responsive because you had you had j it's just as bad as it was now right I mean you had people on monitors that were 320 by 240 actual monitors <laughs> VGA monitors that small you know and and all, all the way it's just up about the to, opposite of portable <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, mean, I never put mine in my pocket um, but I never weighed that much um, so uh, but um, I. Is that is that actually Patrick Gavin on our hangout? Hey, Patrick, it's been forever. Um, Patrick's got a question of where it's going to hurt. So yes, this is this is going to affect you on mobile in terms of ranking. Google isn't isn't yet extending this to desktop search results, um, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point they recognize that users are switching back and forth between devices, and that might actually matter to users. But the biggest thing right now is they're just trying to no longer show people a completely messed up, jarring, sucky experience, um, like uh, you know, uh, trying to you know trying to go to a website that just ain't ever going to let you see the content that you want. They don't want to show that in search results because that makes users unhappy. Well, I mean, you just look at, you know, universal analytics, right? I mean, they're, they're trying to get to that whole notion of cross cross device. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, we're, we're going there. What they what Google would like to do, you kind of look at it. Right? So, their search first is that they want the one, you know, the, 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 the single sign-on for the web with Google+. Plus. That's the first right. thing. Right. Well, they, by the way, they've got Half of that with you on mobile, because on Android you're logged in, and all they got to do yep. is just get you to use Chrome and be logged in all the time, and the, and they can they can watch you between devices. Wouldn't right. that be fantastic world for advertisers to be in? And I'm not sure how the rest of you feel about it. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, what, I, what I'm thinking is a book where it says there's O Ford. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, I'm not sure I can't remember the name of that book. Anyway, so that's a test question for those of you listening. And so the point is, so, I, so they, they want this whole single sign-on. That's the reason the whole Google Plus even exists, because it has no other business value, frankly, except tracking your behavior. Then the second thing they've got, they've got this whole universal analytics thing, where advertisers such as us, right, can, can figure out what's your user ID and how do you connect you between platforms. So you look at what's really, you know, these are, these are painting the way to the future in terms of you know, tracking behavior across devices. And so, yeah, is it important for anybody, any business? I mean, that was one of the questions. I can't remember who asked it. You know, to really be good on mobile. Yes, and it's not because right now it is too damn difficult to enter your 16-digit credit card number, your four-digit expiry, plus your three or four, three or four-digit secret code. Very few people do. I, I've never done it. Some of like, you know, our private clients we talk to. The, yeah, a couple of them have done it. Uh, that 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 just that's, that's a level of. If you've done it once, it doesn't mean you're going to want to do it again. Oh, it's horrible! What a beat, <laughs> right? As I'm having a hard enough time doing it on my desktop. Little They'll on. do it if they're if they're trapped somewhere and they can't get out, and they really need you to send them those huggies by uh, FedEx as fast as possible. But otherwise, no, they will no, not. I'm not doing it. But with things like Apple Pay and PayPal and some of those other payment gateways, that is the future. I mean, at some point, we really do. The phone itself is probably has kind of, you know, has a biometric well, identification. There's your payment method right there. And yep. that, that's probably close enough to the camera for some damn hacker to, to actually to read your rules. Thumb, so. Yeah, right. Well, his isn't, doesn't have color, so you're safe. Oh, yeah, you're probably right, yeah. So now, Shira had asked, Shira is one of our clients, by the way, would you use a specific exit pop or opt in format for mobile users? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but let's talk about that. That's a good question. Well, I mean, that's one of the areas where there's there, there's you know so much uh, testing going on. I, I was uh, you know, Leslie, I sent I sent you a link to the to the landing page that I want for our, our mobile yeah. campaigns for the um, for the lead gen for the opt in things um, because um, it's a 
you know, if 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 uh, there's well, there's like a million funnel trainings going on right now, and some of them are good and some of them suck. And I think the, the big problem is none of them are, are addressing how do I target the right people to get them into the funnel, right? Um, yeah, but um, but uh, but but he was uh, pretty early on in the test, but he was running. Um, first time I checked in on it, he was running a 71% opt-in rate from Facebook uh, from Facebook traffic, and it was up to 83% um, on that variation. And so, yeah, I mean, there, there's there's differences. The main the main thing is it, it with mobile in particular, you, you'd, you'd really like to, you know, if you've got them logged into Facebook, then you want to go ahead and hammer them with uh, with that remarketing pixel because that will follow them over to the desktop. <laughs> because uh, Facebook has you logged in as the same person on both. That's again one of the many many reasons why Google was afraid of Facebook enough to try and force Google Plus down all our throats, is that they recognized that Facebook had a strong strategic advantage in the ability to deliver advertising and remarketing in particular. But um, but definitely, I mean, uh, what you, what you want is something that, that that delivers a big promise quickly. Um, Video seems to work really well as a as a way to back that up, but you don't need to autoplay it because a lot of people are just going to mash the button to get it, make the promise, tell them what they're going to get, um, and we should probably just do a session on mobile funnels one of these days pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe we get Michelle think... back um, if she can show us any of the ones that she's been working on. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, I would say yeah. So the the general. I mean, as a general answer to to Shira's question is was to make sure that the damn pop actually fits the end get it gets you know it treated the same way. It's like you know, the the mobile problem is not a new problem. It's just the cross browser device problem. It's just that now instead of like two or three different screen sizes, we have like I don't know twenty. The it's biggest like, thing with mobile is you don't want to just take over the screen. Um, what you want to do is you know bring. It, and you know, I haven't tested everything with everything, but if you bring in a button or a slider that says, you know, you know, click, you know, click here to get this, and they tap it, then you can open up a light box that takes over the full screen, and, it, and like you turn their phone into an email um, catching device. One of the things that that I, I saw, uh, and I've seen it a number of times, but I saw a really good uh, application of it. Um, there's a there's a Mac app called Napkin, um, and I'm gonna see if I can actually pull up their their page here. It was um, featured just the other day in iTunes. Yeah, so um, the the company is aged and distilled, and well, I can't show you what it looks like on a mobile device. It's aged hyphen and hyphen distilled dot com because well, they really had to have that domain, and of course the non hyphenated version. But so when you go to the, the the website on your desktop, there's just a link to buy it on the Mac App Store because it's a Mac app. When you go to it on an iPhone or any other phone, by the way, um, what you get is this little button that says click. So remind me. Um, to, by sending an email uh, to get it when I'm on my Mac, and uh, so all, all you do is tap, and um, and it it opens up an email. I actually, I was, there was somebody I was talking to on Facebook about three weeks. I was trying to figure out how to get uh, get opt-ins, you know, some some complicated opt-in thing to work. Um, and I said, well, have you considered just using a mail to action, right? Because what they wanted to get was was name, email, and comments. Well, if you want name, email, and comments, right, then just have a mail to form where they <laughs> tap a button and it opens up an email that's pre-populated. And that's what these guys are doing um, with, with, with Napkin. And so they still have to hit send on the email, but I, I can guarantee you um, that, 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 uh, that they're getting a lot of people doing that because every time we've tested something like that, it's worked fantastic. Well, there's also one thing to consider. Uh, like Dan mentioned, Facebook Atlas goes across everything based on where they're logged in with their Facebook account now, especially for advertisers. But the other thing is with iPhones, uh, there's a thing called handoff. And if you're on your computer and you have Bluetooth set up, I can have a tab open, and when I go into my phone, there's another tab for whatever the last kind of thing that I want to hand off to my phone is. So that works really nicely if you're looking up something and you've got to run out the door, or you're going to step into the other room, or for any any reason, really, you can hand it off to your phone. And yeah, and there's something similar with Android as well. With yeah. Chrome. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely a, a changing world in terms of they're not stuck to the one device they're on. 
Um, real quick regarding Shura's thing, you definitely want to be mindful of exit pops, especially if you're doing Facebook advertising. They don't like those, and you will get shut down most likely. <laughs> so uh, a light box and something that has to be dismissed are two different things, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, an exit pop they say in their TOS, and so that's why. Yeah. I'm so if, out. if you're throwing up a JavaScript alert because I'm trying to leave your website, um, go die. Or, or change your <laughs> well, I mean, they, they work, though. I mean, to be fair. I okay, mean, but you know, I still hate one. you, Rudy. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's fine, but I like making money, money, okay? So back at you. I mean, so the fact is, so yes, Google and Facebook don't like them because they want all the money for themselves. All right, whatever. I mean, the fact is, the exit pops work. They continue to work. They always test to get more money. The fact that we can't use yeah, them. So just don't use it on Facebook. Facebook. Exactly. Yeah. Just bear in mind that if you're going to put... You're going to put up something that's only available in an organic search. Damn it. Use an exit pop 100% of the time higher if you can figure out how. No. Exit pops work. I hate them too. Exit pops work. Exit yep. pops and, work. and all I'm saying is if you're going to use Facebook advertising, be mindful of that funnel. Exactly. I agree with you. You know, you don't want to like get, get your paid traffic you know, shut off. So Facebook, Google, basically any paid traffic. You don't really like it. Um, well, things like Outbrain, they don't care. But you know, display, I mean, maybe not. But uh, but the fact is, out you know, actually, Outbrain and those guys are starting to get a few more rules all the time. But they're cracking down a little, yeah. Really? Yeah, good. You know, fine for them. So let's see. Walt asked a question. What's the deal with redirecting? Does this mean you can't build a mobile-specific site that has to be responsive only? Okay. So here's the thing. That that's the MDOT question, right? And so if you're, what you're doing is you're basically doing device detection. You say, I go to mysite.com, but I find out you're on a mobile device. I redirect you at m.mysite.com. That was never the best approach. Um, I, I, you know, there, well, yes, where do you I, redirect Googlebot? Exactly. Because they ain't asking um, as a mobile device. They're not asking as mobile device. I mean, there is there is actually kind of an m.google you know, Google bot, but no, it's not. It's not. Not because they know that mobile redirects are a brittle solution that requires you to detect every case, and you you ain't gonna detect every case, and so they're not gonna send you people. And so what's really going on is with the whole M dot solution, and I mean, you still find it. I mean, there's Twitter and M dot Twitter. That that is a transitional uh, technique, right? What's really gonna happen is that we're gonna find that everybody is required to solve the twenty plus. You know, display uh, size, aspect ratio problem. And we're not going to have this difference between Twitter and M.Twitter. Twitter. We're going to have my site and and M dot my site. That's not going to be an effective strategy going forward. Um, what will be effective is for very frequent users. An app will make sense. Um, so QuickBooks as an app for both desktop and um, and, uh, and and mobile, right? Um, Facebook, you know, you know, obviously the web presence and an app. That's not for your casual user. That's only for your highest volume, highest valued user. That makes sense. Substantial investment to do it, by the way. But no, the whole M dot redirect. Um, that is not. Um, a future-proof solution. So, is what it is. And the future is coming in two weeks. Yeah, pretty much. Future. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think my flying car is uh, already uh, on the on the boat on its way to me. So yeah, I'm that's say. like if you if you get two, give me one to me. So yeah, you know, anyway, send the door page update. So people keep asking about this doorway page update. I mean, so yeah, so what 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 the practice is, and it, it's you know changed and changed over the years, but it's still basically the same idea. What you do is you create bajillions of pages that are machine generated, and just I mean throw keywords on them. Uh, back like in I don't know 1998, 99, I got a site banned because uh, we ran a script that just um, scraped the web and used Markov chaining to um, to put together gibberish text, and then redirected people um, to the actual landing page that we wanted. And um, well, 
Google doesn't like that for some reason, and so what they're doing now is 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 it's just it's just another way of kind of grinding, you know, trying to trying to crank down the screws on on people that have managed to get by their filters all, so far. But if if you're not doing that kind of stuff, and we used to call it a keyword drift net because it's just I mean, we throw this this you know a drift net is something that's um, you know just throw throw this big 20 mile long net and drag it through the ocean and catch everything and then you know pick out the fish that you wanted and throw the dolphin corpses away or whatever um, and uh, it's the same thing I mean it's it's you're just you're, it's like email spam it's it's just uh, you know garbage that that people try and stick into search results in order to hijack somebody to go somewhere else and and that's what it's about it's not about you know you've got pages that are written about stuff that are that, that are handwritten that you're trying to help people it's it's really about the, the the guys that are doing you know massive numbers of dory pages designed to target massive numbers of search results with uh, with no value um, added to it yeah it's not not a new thing that's for sure. Yeah, and that's what I that's what I was asking unless I missed something. I mean the, the last doorway page up there. Yeah, the, the rules was. haven't changed. It's just yeah, that it's they've that they've ago. got some very large offenders that are um, <laughs> skating by right now and won't be soon because they've built this new algorithm to catch them. Oh, and the, okay. Okay. Another example of that that I still see people talking about is uh, Seattle, you know, marriage counseling, rent and marriage counseling, Tacoma marriage counseling. Everett Marriage Counseling, and it's the same page with just Everett and Seattle and Tacoma replaced. That doesn't add any value. Yeah, the, uh, the panda kind of took care of those guys. Most of it, yeah. I still see people talking about it. Like, hey, I'm trying to rank for this city. This is the page. Oh, my goodness, okay. Probably won't rank for that. And there are, there are some tricks to still do that, but you've got to be uh, not as easy as a page. You're talking about a a silo or a microsite is community focused. It actually does add value to the web. And so, you know, it's not it's not that just oh well that'll take me five minutes kind of a strategy that used to be. Um, so yeah. Um, There's a question that I, I'm sure a few other people are asking in the list here. That's uh, uh, I know the answer to, but uh, can we create just the home page to be mobile friendly and have a desktop version, or do we have to make every page mobile friendly? Yeah, every page. Unless you'd like everybody to just bounce from your home page, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's sort of like, would you like to actually engage people on mobile so they'd come back later, remember your name, and type it into a browser? Uh, or would you just like them to go to your home page and then be completely freaked out when they click any link? And how would you make a home page that was mobile friendly and the rest of your site sucks? You know, it's like uh, it, I'm assuming you're using like a framework or a theme or something, which yeah, but it, it's that's that's not mobile friendly. It's not <laughs> more or less definitionally. You know, it's not that a page is mobile friendly. Um, even on the worst sites, you might have an isolated page which doesn't look horrible on mobile. It's a site that's mobile friendly, um, and wow, you'd be surprised. Even some of the biggest brands in the world, they just suck. On Unbelievably bad, and they, they try to like band aid that by throwing up something at the top of so the like get our app. Like, no, I'm looking for a washer and dryer right now, Home Depot. You know, I don't want to like download your app, which will take 47 minutes over the you know crappy connection I have. Edge right network. You know, and, and and then go find out you don't have the dryer. Or what. It's it's that's a loss. Not so much, no. The other thing that we ran into back in the day when we were trying to go mobile, um, especially in the personal injury law space, everybody was trying to sell apps, and I was trying to convince my clients that that was a bad idea, was the, the build-out. The site might be responsive, but what's happening once somebody goes to it from a phone? Are the links crammed together? Are they hard to click? Is the text really small? Is the text hard to read? Um, like on our site, is the header... Uh, chopped off, you know, there were all these things that that Google's going to look at that make it mobile friendly. Just because you install a responsive theme doesn't necessarily mean your site is is actually usable without potentially some some tweaks to to various things. And that's something to think about. That I was even back then. I think this was 2012. I was arguing with my dev guy about, you know, oh, it's responsive. Yeah, but it looks horrible. I can't click a link. 
that, that doesn't that doesn't help the situation. It, re it responds, but it responds badly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some things you're not going to be able to fix. To be clear, so uh, fixed width headers. So like on our website, um, the 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 logo, okay, it, is going to stay. So you, you you as you look at it on mobile, you're going to see things rearranged in the news theme, the Genesis news theme. Uh, does a really good job of of, of of maintaining the integrity of the content, but certain things you you just can't fix, you know, unless you're doing some really wild ass hacks where you're where you're checking the viewport size. And we you know we've looked at this. It's now what do you do to the header? You know, if you split the header up into different pieces, we've done that for some of our clients. For example, uh, people who are lead gen, and we have a couple of these where we've done this. Where the header is split up into two or three pieces because the phone number, which is delivered by a call tracking solution, is in a piece by itself. And so when you collapse the viewport, what happens is it, it, it stacks it from horizontal, like it stacks it to vertical. So you get a logo and headline, maybe it's chopped off or whatever, but you still get the click to call, right? And then you get the content below it. At some level, you got to realize what's the best you can do with a screen that's looked like this. For a website that's built for a monitor that looks like this, you know, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, um, and you don't necessarily have to serve up the the exact same everything. Um, you can you can not you know not link to stuff that's not mobile friendly, but it gets dicey. I mean, the fact is, I I, I think that's something that's that's okay maybe in the short term, but in the long run. Um, you know, it's there. There's no good answer um, to to delivering a good mobile experience on something that isn't built for mobile, right? I mean, you might have an app that. I mean, you know, there's no mobile version of the of you know any of the the tools we use to manage AdWords. There's no mobile version of analytics that um, doesn't break, right? I mean, it, Chrome or Android or whatever. Um, but um, but you know, th this isn't about perfect. This is about better, um, and that's the reason why it's you know on a page by page basis. Um, so now, if you you know if you did have something, you might have had a you know a content piece that was going to show up in a mobile search result, but it doesn't because that part of your site isn't isn't mobile friendly. It's not going to show up in a mobile search result anymore. They'll just drop it from the results. Um, that might hurt or it might not. Uh, I think the the bigger thing that the people have to have to think about with mobile. You know, I, I think that the the hoop Google's making us jump through right here is a relatively simple one to get through. I think it's it's the the fact that you know what what else is it costing you <laughs> other than that? And as far as header graphics go, Leslie, if we could just get all the browser guys to support SVG, then everybody could do vector headers, and it'd be super cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, Something there's that. The future. Yeah. There's that'll, that'll show up with my flying car. But yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty, with that little one that folds into a briefcase. Damn it. It's but it's, 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 it's almost like a Godwin's law of, of our hangouts. If somebody gets to talking about SVG, it's probably time to wrap it up. So let's see if we got any more good questions. Oh, we have some great that. questions. So Greg okay. asked, because you know, Google is also, and we've got 100 plus people on the call. So you know, this is obviously a topic that everyone's interested in, which is good. Uh, Google has also started pushing the HTTPS website. How far away are we from being mandated by Google like this mobile directory? Well, bear in mind, this is not a mandate from Google. They're just telling you if you don't do it, you're going to lose money. And it's yeah, really for HTTPS, HTTPS, the only search results where that's going to affect you is stuff where they think that there's actually a potential security issue and showing an insecure result. Um, because, well, the insecure result is probably there because of one of their many th redirect bugs that, allow, that allows people to shove the wrong content into their index. But, uh, but HTTPS is something that um, everything, the whole web should be encrypted, but the, but there's actually ways to do that over HTTP. Um, Firefox is, is building in support for one of those methods. It ain't perfect, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if a couple years from now all of the web browser traffic is is encrypted by default without everybody going to, going to HTTPS. Mm, I think about that, the details of that. That's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, it's not perfect security, but uh, but it is you know it it is not sending everything around the web in plain text, right? Somebody has to actually try uh, to intercept, and, and they have to do work to do it. Jo uh, John said, "So won't the mobile check only affect ranking in mobile, not desktop?" Well, yes, yes, but, but over. But, um, 
I mean, how much does that affect how humans respond to? And you know, right? I mean, if you if you if you if you understand that uh, the social graph has an influence whether or not they measure plus ones or Facebook likes as a ranking signal, the social graph has influence, and most of the social graph activity happens on one of these. I mean, if you if you could, if you go in and break down like where do your shares of your your stuff come from on Facebook? It's people sharing it on their phone a lot more than it's people doing it on their desktop. So it does cost you. It's just not a direct, you know, like Google's not going to show your site because it's not mobile friendly. Well, you're on a desktop, they don't care yet. Well, at some point they they will because the world is cross device and it does affect users. Well, yeah, and in, 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 in largely in ways that you don't, you can't measure. That's that. That's the other problem here. It's because there's not really. I mean, the the moment there is a a 100% effective biometric identifier on the web, I will stop touching all computers. <laughs> Just saying. But you know, so if I search for something and find something on my phone, and I happen to remember the domain name, like our good friend Jerry, who has a martial arts site. And and yes, Jerry. In fact, you were one of our you can re, remain one of our great testimonials for for the the uh, uh, you know the success of our of our techniques. I mean, you did the work. I mean, so it's you know hat tip to you. Uh, but the fact is, if I find your your site, and then because I don't want to type in 16 digits of my credit card number, but I remember how to find you online. Right, so I remember some portion of your domain name, like Knights or Bushido or whatever, and I type that into a browser. And because Google is really good at navigational queries and is a really wide net on what constitutes navigational, I find your site, and then you look like, oh man, you know, my my uh, my branded search is awesome. But wait, what you what what none of us is able to track. Is the fact that the reason I found out about you because I was sitting with probably Phil Weaver would be the person that I may have you know, and he told me about your website, and I put it in my phone and said, "Wow, yeah, cool. Oh yeah, that's Jerry, right?" Right. See, that chain of events is untrackable by any technology that any of us wants to have, let alone is available today. That's what's happening now, and we have fifty or sixty percent of, of all search is on mobile. So you know, think about that. If, what, if, what if, let's say mobile didn't exist, and what instead happened was 50 or 60 percent of all search was untrackable? Oh, well, it kind of already did happen because of the keyword hiding. But, you know, see, that's the problem we have. So we don't really know how people find us. That's the challenge here. And so you can't say, well, I'm not getting traffic from mobile. You don't know if you're getting traffic from mobile. Not really. I mean, if you are, you don't know what it's worth. Because we don't have good cross-device tracking, right? Dan, I'm done with my rant. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <laughs> that you one. don't have There's another one. <laughs> good cross-device tracking, but there is some cross-device tracking that that goes on within different channels. I mean, one of the reasons why Facebook is an awesome channel is because of the fact that we can remarket to people and reach them across multiple devices, and you know. Nobody talks about how awesome that is because we've just kind of gotten used to it being that awesome, or we're not aware that it's that awesome, and we're not even taking advantage of it. But you know, there there are certain things that just aren't ever going to get better, right? There are certain things. There, there, the you and Phil aren't going to have to wear tin foil hats to keep the satellite from picking up your conversation, right? Yeah. Um, there's not going to be a thing in 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 uh, in Google Analytics that said, you know, satellite says your friend told you about it. <laughs> you know which one it is, and well, he heard about it from Facebook, um, from Sally who heard about it on Twitter, and right. Uh, so I mean, yeah, there's there's a uh, there's 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 always going to be limits to our comprehension here, but um, but the fact is, you know, the, the the cases that we have, it's not a split test; it's a serial test, right? It's I mean, um, well, you know, the chap we were talking with earlier that sells the. Uh, the shoes that aren't shoes. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're, you can see in their analytics almost a, du a doubling of conversion rate between the old version of their website and the new version of their website. The main difference, as far as I can tell, and I mean, it's kind of prettier on the desktop, but the main difference is that now they're they're actually mobile friendly. 
Yeah, they're very responsive. Yeah, it's, it's a very good layout yeah. for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, I've never seen somebody go to something where they it adds in a responsive mobile thing and their conversion rate for the site doesn't go up. And it doesn't necessarily go up a whole bunch on mobile, like I said before. It, you know, so it'll affect your conversion rate on the desktop that you're better on mobile because what do I do? When I find something I want to buy on mobile, I email it to myself from my phone and then I go buy it on my desktop where I'm... Which I looks like it. direct. You know, see, that's the thing. It's like, so yep. we have this, all this direct traffic, which is not really direct. It's just untrackable whatever, search referral, it's, whatever. It's just mystery traffic. Mystery traffic. <laughs> it came from somewhere, but you don't know where, and it sure as heck isn't all bookmarks. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, so <laughs> bookmarks from people that have cleared their cookies since they bookmarked you. Yeah, so I, Otherwise, there would be some bookmarks? stores there that it would yeah, be. I thought, I thought Evernote replaced bookmarks. But uh, Terry asked a really good question. And so, you know, this is really actionable. It's like, okay, so I want to be mobile friendly. Now, what do I do? Okay. And Terry says, he's, and then this is good, by the way, I'm using this mobile update as the time to completely update my site from 2006. So, good. It's, it's probably time. And uh, that it, it uses a PHP and half the site is dynamic to boot. So I'm moving to WordPress. Am I in deep trouble? No, you're doing exactly the right thing. Um, you know, witness Genesis and the news thing. So ge the Genesis framework out of the box is responsive. Almost, almost all, with a very few exceptions, are for special purpose like, you know, artists and photographers and shit. Almost all of those child themes are very mobile responsive. Um, I mean, you look at our website. There are a couple things that I would, I, would, I we will change at some point. But you know, hey, it passes, it, it passes the test. Yeah. You know. Well, and it doesn't actually look quite as bad as that 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 image rendering from uh, Google's tool. But um, you know, right? It's it's not great. Um, and um, and there, there's room to improve it for sure, but the main thing is, you know, for us is can they see the most recent article and can they read it? And and yes, they can. It's, you know, for us, it's it's not as effective as it could be in a marketing perspective, right? On a desktop, we've got all kinds of you know cool, cool things we rotate in. On 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 the mobile, we're really not doing much to try and capture you as a lead, for example. But to me, the most important thing is on mobile is can they read it? And you know, if they decide they want to share it, well, great, because Facebook is already built into their phone. All they have to do is push the little arrow and, and, and share it, and, and they share it. And we see that happen all the time from our site. I mean, we get organic uh, sharing and stuff like that on Facebook a lot. Yeah, and that, Dan, that brings up the, you know, and I think that's the most important thing is I don't think that we're, you know, with, with respect to our particular site, and everyone is going to be different about what their, what their most felt need is. On our particular site, with respect to the mobile experience, we're not really um, uh, surfacing the the sharing experience much, and that's one of the things that people are doing something very different on desktop and mobile typically. Um, and so on, on mobile, what we really like is like you know, can I mail that to myself or to a friend, and can I share it? And those are you know because I mean obviously entering a credit card number is too much of a pain in the ass. And so what uh, what's what's my real most wanted response on a mobile device? You know, it's probably the viral nature because there are people sitting around. You know, well, take some phones. qualifying action like click a click a link to download a, a PDF, and now I've got you in a remarketing audience. Things like exactly. that. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, and, and, that's, and, and that's the thing. You don't actually, need their email address to keep talking to them anymore. It's nice to have, but it's not. You don't have to make it mandatory anymore. You don't First have step to. is getting them into a into an audience, and then um, from that audience, then you've got multiple opportunities to to convince them that they want to give you not just an email address, but um, you know, stick their thumb on their phone and buy something from you. So Kurt asked, what about .NET Nuke? Well, so the first of all... <laughs> <laughs> we have such long history with .NET Nuke that I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Yeah, go ahead and do that, Dan. And so while well, I try to uh, choose my words carefully. So if you're on a Windows platform, you're a... What is the English word for that? Um, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, just don't do that. I mean, um, you know, Nancy Reagan said it best. Just say no. Um, a or, I mean, and it's not it's not just the only it's not that's not the only platform like that. Can I just use Windows on the weekends, Leslie? Uh, why would you all better by Monday? Why 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 would you want to do that on your day off? I don't get that. That's supposed to be a day of recreation, not. Recreation. Well, they told me it was dangerous to huff glue. 
Yeah, well, there's that, and so pretty much the same with Windows. It's, yes, I understand that some people are tied to .NET new. Just don't do that. I just say no. And the fact of the matter is, move on to a platform that actually has, you know, much wider support. Uh, is much more standards compliant. Things like, for example, where they don't think that upper and lower case are the same, which none of the rest of the world thinks, and including search engines. So yeah, you're 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 in a, you're in a you know backwater where you're not going to get the support you need in order to actually continue on with the, like the quote unquote modern day. So I know that's a little bigoted, but the fact of the matter is, you're playing in too small a pond to actually play. Um, Wall did a follow up. Okay. So um, Patrick had a quick follow up there. Um, so if you if you get caught up in this update, um, what do you have to do when you fix the site? You really don't have to do anything when you fix the site. And as I understand it, this is going to be something that updates pretty quickly because it's something that's accomplished in the crawling process. So I would not expect you know, if you get whammied on on April 21st and you fix it on the 22nd, I would think a week or two at the most. Um, and I mean, that's how fast the mobile friendly tag shows up on sites that, that we've worked on to get them to pass the test to have the mobile friendly tag, which, you know, like this whole update is about being able to remove that, right? Because they'll, they'll all be mobile friendly. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but it was like four or five days and, and the mobile friendly tag was on there. So, I mean, it's basically at the speed that they crawl, I think it's updated very fast. So, well, well. Wall also replied with a uh, with a follow. He said, "I get it that M dot isn't a good idea, but I don't necessarily want to show the same stuff on all devices." Well, you don't. I think you want to show the same stuff, just not the same way. And that's the tension, you know, around you know M dot. Oh, sorry, there, there are three levels. There's app, M dot, and responsive theme. Those those are the three choices. And so if you like truly have a really really Big case. So, for example, Kayak. All right. So, Kayak has a mobile responsive site. Look, you can have an M dot if you're going to let Google crawl and index the M dot. But if you have a non-mobile friendly other site, that thing ain't going to do you a damn bit of good uh, with with mobile devices. It's really that simple. It's not a crime to use an M dot domain or a mobile dot or whatever. But um, they're not going to send you people to redirect. Okay. That's the problem. So. Well, yeah, your non-mobile site was getting traffic before, and you could redirect to MDOT, and you're delivering a good experience. Now, your non-mobile site isn't going to be in that search result on people's phones, so you won't have to worry about redirecting anymore. So, yes, can you can you let them crawl and inspire your mobile site, and can that show up in search results? Yes, but that's the only way that you're going to get that traffic. Yeah, and and, and it, uh, now you have two sites to maintain. I just I think MDOT was always a bad idea. I just, I just never liked it. I mean, if, if you're going to do I, anything, I, I accept don't that it could be a necessary evil in some cases, but that's what you're dealing with. Is is you've got to got to accept that that a lot of the traffic that was coming in is going to get chopped off, and so you know your hosting bill should be cheaper because you won't be using as many compute cycles to redirect people. So, um, cost savings there. Bobby asked, and this is about pictures specifically. How do you get pictures to resize? Is some kind of JavaScript? Uh, or should I go with one of the uh, the paid themes, which take care of this? Um, actually, there, I, I think there are several different several different approaches. Well, all the paid themes use jQuery to do it, so or you can just do it with jQuery yourself. It was... Yeah, because the, the the whole viewport, you know, resizing thing. That's that's ultimate. The underlying technology is that JavaScript detects the viewport size, the viewport size. And people have built libraries of functions to make it easy to do. Otherwise, we'd all still be just as Stone Age as we ever were. Yeah, and so just, like, push that down to your, you know, geek team and be done with that. Uh, when will you get in on that call? Um, uh, paid by paid, no. It's it's really kind of, well, yeah, sort of, but site-wide. Uh, John's asked his question twice. I think uh, Dan pretty much covered it in, in his last answer just a couple minutes ago, which was, how do you get Google to recognize it as mobile friendly and webmaster tools once you've made it mobile friendly? And uh, they'll recognize it. They're crawling you all the time. Oh, and dot Suzette wants that. It wants to know a dot Moby. Yeah, I don't know what the whole thing about all these ridiculous top level domains is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and send What's a letter. The point? I mean, it's like I mean, seriously, I'm just going to go ahead and get a dot Leslie, right? I mean, crap. That I mean, probably would have seemed like a good idea in 2006. Right? I don't know. I just don't get it. Now um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. 
I mean, well, you can you can spam lawyers and sell them dot lawyer and dot attorney, and maybe there's a dot law firm now. I don't know. I don't know. Um, the short answer is that is that uh, yeah, no, real mobile responsive. Yes, that's what we're saying is mobile responsive. Where you want to go? And here's a couple of reasons. So first of all, you know, I'm going to build remarketing audiences and a brand and blah 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 blah, and I'm going to do that with a whole bunch of different top-level domains that look kind of similar? Really? No, I'm not going to do that. You know, why would I want marketersbraintrust.mobi or m.marketersbraintrust.com or hell, maybe m.marketersbraintrust.mobi. m.mobi would be good. M, m, m.mobi. Wow. Anyway, that's probably taken. But anyway, the point is, like, why would I want that when I'm trying to build a brand on marketersrangerhouse.com, build a remarketing audience there so I can follow those people every time they, they touch my site? So it just doesn't make any sense. Um, I tried to get wiki wiki dot wiki, but... I, that net was not available? No, it was already taken. <laughs> Maybe wiki dash wiki dash wiki dot wiki. I, I just wanted wiki wiki wiki. Wiki wiki wiki. Uh, okay, that... Sounds really weird. Um, there are lots of free responsive themes. That's true. Um, mobile also includes tablets, which a lot of people don't understand. That's true. You got to be careful about that. Um, breadcrumbs. What? I noticed that sometimes Google asks you to remove breadcrumbs. You got a message from Google to ask you to remove breadcrumbs. Really? Well, it's the the. the the, the issue isn't about breadcrumbs, it's about um, are the tap targets usable, because that's one of the things they try and look at. So, right, if you've got if you've got little bitty tiny links that nobody can't actually touch and use, then that's not mobile friendly. It's, it's basically the same issue as tiny type. So it's, it's the, you got to think about the tap targets, right? So you can't have, um, you know, a, a little tiny menu with 9,000 different things that are, you know, like <laughs> an eighteenth of a finger apart, right? Um, fingers are as fat as they are. The beauty of, of iOS was that they figured out a way to actually make something that was incredibly usable um, that didn't require you to use a, a, a stylus or a pointer. Um, and now all the phones are like that. And so, yeah, you can, I mean, if, if, if you need them to be able to whip out a stylus to use your website on mobile, that's not mobile friendly. Palm Pilots are no longer the target platform. Yeah, and by the way, so we were just talking about top level domains, and Philip raised a good point, and so to be clear here, yeah, I tap targets, that's great. Top level domains are important if you want to uh, to geo target other countries. Yes, but dot mobi is not a country. Um, and so dot lawyer is not a country. Dot me is not a country. There should be a dot lawyer country. <laughs> I'm thinking more planet. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, just, until we can get them onto the BR, we can give them their own country. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's the thing. Yes. Um, and by the way, the whole we should do that. One of one of our um, we'll figure out in our editorial calendar where we do that because there is a best practice that very few people actually use for doing uh, multi-country, multi-country domains. Um, and whether or not it really uses uh, country, in, you know, country-specific top-level domains, I think is highly arguable. And so I can show you the two different ways that you could do that. And what I consider, at least, from working with clients that have done it, is is what the best practice is. Um, I maintain. And I'll just like tease this one, throw that one out here. Is I maintain that that country-specific TLDs is in general, assuming you have more than two that you want to target, is not the best way. Now, if it's only two, <laughs> dot Pluto, that's great, Apple. Uh, it's perfect. That's exactly the right distance, and it's not actually a planet anymore. Uh, but if, if you only have two, if you want to say, like, I don't know, France and Germany, okay, great. Then do two top-level domains. There's still some special things you have to do there unless you want to really have, like, doubled the costs of doing content for those two businesses. However, if you want to do more than two, I believe that your .com and certain approaches, it's a little bit complicated, to doing geo-targeting is the right solution. I don't think that multiple top-level domains is necessarily the right thing to do. That said, 
if I could afford it, I would go buy the top level domains and I would redirect them in exactly the right way to my .com so they ended up on the page with the right language showing. So that's, I mean, that's a little bit involved there, but uh, the country top level domains make sense. All this other ridiculous stuff, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's bizarre. I mean, it's worse than triple dub. Right? So I'm just saying. That's just me. So. Um, send me an email because that might be another. Oh, that was Dan's right. response. I'm sorry, I was reading Dan's email. I was like, wait, that looks like some of my stats by 75% to my existing stack site are via tablet. Wow. Okay, so Gary has like 75% of his visitors are from tablet. Um, should I redesign a layout specifically with a tablet, except that the responsive layout for a phone would be less than perfect? I mean, well, if 75% of the visitors are on that platform, I would say that's probably the, the most important experience to design for. Um, but um, but use a framework that's going to downsize appropriately the tablet. I mean, it's a yeah. phone. Yeah. There yeah, are the, thing, the thing with a tablet is you've got to rec recognize that more often than not, the phone is being held in portrait. Well, the tablet's not. The tablet is quite often in landscape or in portrait, and um, you know you, you really want it to, to work either way. So, I mean, responsive is was you know developed for a reason, and all the you know all the the, the tech that supports it was developed for a reason, and that's because of the fact that um, you know you never do that you never do this to your computer, right? But you do that with your tablet all the time. Wow, that was really. I mean, weird. I just did it. That, that was, was awesome. just a demonstration. Yeah, there, that, you know, there it, are it, platforms that, um, that at least the first one I saw, and I can't remember what it's called, it came out probably 2012, where it was the first one I saw where you could start at the bottom, say mobile, and design it specifically for mobile, and then the next size up, you could, design, you could do the layout how you wanted it to look. So if you wanted to include the full header, if you wanted to only include the logo, etc., and you could build your way out, which would take a lot of work to do, but I thought it was a I thought it was a really interesting method to try to make it more perfect for mobile and tablet and desktop. Um, I'm sure it's more work than most people want to do, but it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I don't. I just, like I said, I just, I just don't know that it's necessary today. I mean, there's so many um, there's so many ways to just you know build build response from the get go. I mean, we're we're working on one right now for a client. Well, this was responsive. It was just you could choose the layout. Well, yeah, but so. you're talking about billing kind of like from the bottom up as opposed to the top down, right? So you, you know, are you going to go, you know, full screen and then go down to small screen, or go from small screen to big screen? I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, the the way the, the the kind of the standard algorithm for to go responsive, and uh, you know, and we'll we'll get permission to show this person's website at some point. You know, on a hangout, we'll go through this. What responsive looks like, um, but I mean, typically, what you do is you have like some sort of columnar approach, and so as you as you shrink the width, um, then the columns end up in in line, and so you still, yeah. The, the you know, grid is based on percentages, like thirds, right? Uh, yeah. Instead of instead of fixed widths, and I mean, by the way, I mean actually, Leslie, I mean one of the one of the things that you emphasized like way back in two thousand nine when we were starting this company. Um, with our website was was I mean I was doing all kinds of design worst practices like you know pixel heights and stuff like that and you had you know you were insisting that everything be converted into percentages and 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 all that stuff and it's like well why are we doing that so you said accessibility right and it, you know like just you know, no I mean our website's going to be accessible it wasn't even an option for me to do all the cool design hacks that I knew how to do that were bad so I mean that helps us now though because we design for accessibility and that actually is a big part of getting to do a mobile friendly layout is that you look at things as a percentage and not as a an absolute number yeah I mean there's really only I mean if you're ever using I mean you know there there are exceptions to this rule but if you're using things which are PX, you know, in your CSS or whatever, so if you're using pixels, you're probably going down the wrong path. Instead, it, it ought to be either percentage or EM. Um, those are the ones which are going to do the right thing as a person who's either uh, has really old old eyes and can't see where shit and is doing like command plus seven times and read your text, or is on a different device. So percentage and EM good. 
PX almost always bad, but it's the default. And that's the thing. When I say font equal font size equal 14, the default is PX. It's 14 pixels, which is about I don't know 11 11 points. You know, if I say my head my header is 22 PX, that means if that's fixed. I mean, you know, no matter what I do, okay, that's what it is. Well, actually, that's not true. When you when you actually do Command Plus in the browser, it does change because the browsers are smarter than the designers, and it, which is really a sad statement about designers, by the way. But anyway, the, moving on. But if I say instead that no, my header is 1.25 em, what that says is it's 25 percent larger than my body copy. See now, as I do, you know, Command Plus, Command Minus, whatever on my browser, everything sizes accordingly. Everything sizes the right way. So that my layout still looks the way my designer said it should. Look. Those are really important things to consider when you go to mobile as well. It's not just that your responsive theme takes columns and turns them into you know the linear stripes. You also make sure that your typography doesn't get completely screwed up. And so, you know, a lot of this is about um, a lot of it's you know just about really understanding what style sheets even mean. How to use modern HTML? You're still doing HTML2. It's almost impossible. It's something that's going to be really responsive. So there was another rant. Wow, that's like three in one. Hang on, I'm about at average, right? Just saying. Anyway. Okay. Um, uh, it looks like we've exhausted our questions. I've certainly exhausted myself. And so, what? Uh, are any closing comments before we call this one a day? There's some pretty cool Facebook stuff targeting wise. So I just gotta, yeah, mention mention that Would you address. Do, you can now uh, target some some people. Not I guess not. It's not rolled out uh, site wide or ads manager wide, but you can target address now. So you can put in a specific address, not just a zip code. You mean an entire address? I mean like you show a, an ad directly at me. Based on your if address. Facebook has your address, or depending on if it uses a partner category, right? It's yeah. I mean, right. The the data is getting the the loop is getting closed between who's who and where they are and uh, which one you are and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, we can already use email addresses and phone numbers to make custom audiences, but being able to use addresses is sweet. Because yeah. I might not know who's there now. Maybe I just want to bother whoever lives there now, like a ghost haunting a house. Well, can we can we do zip codes? Well, yeah, you can do zip codes. This is even more targeted. Yeah, that yeah, was um, ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean, you know, you know, combining that with what you know, what Ben Morris, you know, has done for us, I mean, but there's some there's some interesting things that can be done. Yeah, there. well, you can actually just like you know target all the homes that are over six thousand square feet by address now, I guess. Uh, it could be, yeah, maybe. So, all right, well, that's maybe that's an interesting topic for a future uh, hangout. I mean, who knows, right? Uh, detailed scary targeting. We call it the scary targeting hangout. But uh, yeah. So all right, very good. So if there's no line, uh, great. I think we've done uh, well done in getting this put together this week. Thank you, Bobby. We really appreciate that. Fourth, oh, fourth time on. is a charm, as it turns out. Um, I, I swear to God, I hope that we have found all of the latent bugs. Um, Media queries. Yeah, you're right, Philip. You know, I mean, you can use, you know, the, in CSS you can do media, which will differentiate between like print and different viewport size, different kinds of devices. So yes, that's another way you can do that. Adjust yeah, your so you CSS. You can prevent showing links to stuff that you didn't want to show, for example. Uh, the, yes, or I mean, one of my pet peeves is the fact that web pages routinely don't print well. In fact, I mean, it, there's it's surprising things, but yeah. So when you 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 go print the page. It really prints the viewport. It doesn't print the whole page. There was actually a WordPress news theme somebody was selling a couple of years ago, and that was their big selling point: was that ours ours is printable. <laughs> you know, there's so many they're not. It's I I don't understand that either because uh, the fact is it, it should be uh, I don't want to get down into you know XSL style sheets and transforms, but it should be a very easy thing for every website to have a print friendly version that that just rides along with the themes, just nobody cares about it. Yeah, I just wish the browser did it correctly, but that's another story. Okay, so anyway, thanks guys. I really appreciate that everyone showed up, I and mean, more than 100 people, and and, uh, and that, that's fantastic that 
And that many people actually had the patience to show up like four times in a row to actually see us on. Yeah, I feel like Walt. We got him with the Okie doke like every single time. He's been he's been like the first one logged in every single time right before you crashed the hangout by logging in. Yeah, there's that, and so and so yeah, Walt gets the award for the most patient of us, right? So, but anyway, thanks everybody, and we will. As it turns out, now that we've got this like dialed in, we will see you next week Same, with a different topic. A different topic. But the same technology, thankfully. Same time. Yes, yeah, same time. You mean we're not gonna same. we're not gonna try to upgrade to Webinar Jam Studio and break everything between now and then? We we Let's might up we might we might do that at another time besides right before the hangout. Yeah. Yes, well, <laughs> maybe sometime during the week you and I'll test that just so we did this one. So wait a minute, you guys are just hanging out, sharing information, nothing to sell. John said. Well, yeah, not this time. If you want to buy something, you can it. email us. I mean, we might try and sell you something a different time. Yeah, and so, I mean, I mean yes. We'd love to sell you something. Just email us and say, what What do you want to sell me? And then we'll talk to you about your business and figure out what we should sell you. Yes, and that's that's true. That's, that is what we do, by the way, but yes. No, so oh. don't get, you know, sometimes Mr. we actually... Nobody read that. Ian's comment, please. Quick, quick question. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Um, quick, quick, quick answer to a question that was probably asked at the beginning. Uh, YouTube.com slash marketers brain trust is where the replay will be, but it's not going to be as fast as before, right, Leslie? Because we have to upload it. won't it. be automatic because we're actually logged in as Leslie's uncle or something like that. I don't even know. Like We had to find somebody that had a, a, a virgin Gmail account that had never been connected to Google+. Plus. So. I, had, no, I had created that in, in October. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> so, uncle at Gmail. Yeah. So no. We, yeah. So there is there's a the manual that 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 Yeah. So that they, normally normally you would expect on a hangout that it would be automatically disappear on YouTube, and so this one will magically appear on YouTube, but magically appear at a place you will not be able. It'll to be find one it. of those technologies that is distinguishable from magic because it won't be instant. And so now I have to download and update it, or upload it to the right place. So it's a it's a uh, P I T A for everyone knows what that expands to. But it's at least hey, it's better than all of the alternatives. And I please God help Google. Let's all pray for Google um, that they actually. Yeah, fix let's just have a moment of silence for PhD engineers because they should have hired some. Bachelor of Science Engineers. Apparently. At least one internet marketer that had a profile and a page. Think of the use cases. Two of well, the use cases are beneath me. I'm a PhD, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But Apparently, it seems like it would be the dominant use case for somebody with a business account to be doing a hangout, but I guess not. I guess not. They only thought that people... It's like you would want to do this with your mom and post that to YouTube. Yes. Well, there isn't a number of attendees. But anyway. Okay, so <laughs> it's like makes total sense. Not very All right. good. So I think we're done. So thanks everybody for showing up, and we will see you next week. Next week there will be yet another hangout. That will be two in a row. Oh my God! Two. The Brain Trust Hangout. Marcus Brain Trust. Let's be ready. Corey Burke and uh, and the damn thieves, and hopefully Michelle will be joining us next week as well. So thanks everybody. Take care.